Setting up Wi-Fi could be a real pain in the neck, but I'm going to go over everything I've learned throughout the years to help ease that pain and give you the best Wi-Fi performance possible. The first thing that I've seen a lot of people make the mistake of is location. You really want to make sure that your Wi-Fi router is in the center of your place so it has room to spread throughout your place. Uh, I've seen people put it in closets and complain about their Wi-Fi or even put it on a shelf that's like down low and even has doors around it of course if you're doing that and you're not giving it room to breathe so to speak you're gonna have bad Wi-Fi performance you want to make sure it's in the center part of your place if at all possible to where it can spread throughout your place and you want to make sure that you keep it away from other electronics that way it can you know again not be interfered with by anything and then of course there are all the router settings that we're about to go over they're a little bit tedious at first but once you learn them they're actually fairly easy and this applies to any router out there for the most part. So let's hop into my Netgear Nighthawk XR500 and go over all of my Wi-Fi settings. All right, so once you've logged into your router, do not be afraid to click around and learn where everything is, especially if it's a newer router for you. Um, as long as you don't apply any settings, you're not gonna break anything. Once you've kind of learned your basic setup for your router, go ahead and find your basic internet settings. For me on the XR500, that's under settings, setup, wireless setup. And the first thing you're probably gonna see is enable Smart Connect or something similar. And what Smart Connect allows devices to do is either choose their 2.4 or 5 gigahertz wireless band, depending on where they are. And this option is kind of broken. I do not like using it, especially if you're trying to optimize for best Wi-Fi performance. So I always disable it. The next thing is enable your SSID broadcast. Of course, you want to have this enabled. So when you pull out a phone or whatever you're connecting to Wi-Fi on, you can easily find the name and you know your own password and you can get into Wi-Fi easy. The next thing down is enable 2040 coexistence. You want to disable this option. If 2040 coexistence is enabled and you're a different place in your house, you're moving around, whatever, there is a chance that your speed can lower. So if you disable it, you will always get max speed depending on your location. And just a quick note here, remember 2.4 gigahertz wireless reaches a bit further and at a little bit less of, uh, you know, your power overall. So you can reach a lot farther with 2.4 gigahertz, but you're not gonna get the same speed as your five gigahertz. Five gigahertz will not reach as far, but will give you more speed. So always keep that in mind. I see people confused. They'll get onto their 2.4 gigahertz. They'll move to the other side of their place and be like, the speed is really low. Well, yeah, because it can reach that far, but your speed's going to be low. Or they'll get on 5 gigahertz and be like, oh, my connection isn't 100%. Right. You're going to get more speed, but the Wi-Fi isn't going to reach as far. So always keep that in mind. All right. So the next thing up uh, after naming your uh, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz wireless is going to be your channel. Most devices come with an auto, auto setting, and it's already set to auto. This is not what you want to do. You want to choose either channel 1. 1, 6, or 11 when it comes to 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Now, there are ways you can test what the best channel is for your network. There's a thing called Wi-Fi Analyzer on Android devices. I don't know if there's an equivalent on iOS. You can use it. It does help. I've used it. I still use it. it however, it can tell you channels that are not the, the best performing overall. And so again, stick with either one, six or 11, but it is a good backup just to kind of see, um, you know, what channels it recommends and just kind of how uh, your signal strength is to that area overall. Pretty good uh, little thing to have if you have a phone. Anywho, uh, next thing down is going to be your mode. Just go ahead and leave it wherever it is, up to 800 for me. Uh, your security options, of course, you're gonna leave them right where they are. Your password, of course, my password is not password, but enter a password that you can remember that other people will not figure out. Do not use password. Do not use password one, two, three, please, because people can come into your neighborhood and log on to your Wi-Fi and do some pretty nasty stuff that you'll get in trouble for, not them. So make sure to uh, always have a strong password that you can remember when you need to. 
All right, next thing, again, is your 5 gigahertz stuff. Um, you want to add a dash 5G or dash whatever so that you can recognize that it's the 5 gigahertz wireless over the 2.4 gigahertz, or you can just name it something different, I guess, but I always just use dash 5G, so you can see it's dash uh, 5G there. And then the channel, uh, same kind of thing when it comes to the 2.4 applies to the 5 gigahertz. There are the best channels, which are 36, 40, 44, and 48. These DFS channels are not currently activated. You have to activate them within the advanced settings, or at least in my router. I do not use DFS channels. Uh, radar will knock them off and boot you offline all the time. And so, just don't use them. And when it comes to these higher channels, again, they're not the recommended channels. Even if you use a Wi-Fi analyzer and it says to use one of these higher channels, stick with these if you can. If you're having drops, then maybe change channels. But through my experience, as long as you're using that reason of 2.4 is going to reach further, 5 gigahertz not going to reach as far, then uh, the these first channels are going to be... Uh, the best overall so i stick with 36 again the mode i just leave it right where it is and security i leave it where it is password you can use the same password on your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless makes things easier apply all those settings once applied you want to move on to your advanced settings all right so we've moved on to the advanced side of things for me it's under settings advanced settings advanced wireless and this is where you can turn on and off your 2.4 or 5 gigahertz radios so if you're not using one band or the other you can disable one i actually don't use 2.4 gigahertz wireless all my devices are 5 gigahertz compatible and my place isn't big enough where it's a problem and i have disconnects so i just have no real need for 2.4 However, if you have a really big place and you need internet on the other side, leave that 2.4 gigahertz enabled and remember to use that when you're really far away from your router. All right, so for me, I'm going to disable this, but your Wi-Fi multimedia, you always want to leave that on if it's there. Your CTS RTS threshold, leave it exactly where it is. It's probably going to be 2347. Your preamble mode is the one thing you're actually going to adjust for both your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Uh, they're always set to automatic and that will allow your devices to choose either long or short preamble, uh, depending on what What's going on but it's only going to choose one or the other and not per device so if one device in your whole network needs a long preamble it's going to force the whole network to be on long preamble however through my experience i've never had a device that requires long preamble so your best option here is going to be short preamble and that's going to give you just a faster wi-fi connection just to make things simple uh your transmit power control just leave it at 100 percent if you have that option i mean you can you know adjust it if need be but there's really no need to adjust that uh, my router has this cool thing when the thing is uh, enabled that i can actually set a schedule for wi-fi and have it turn off it's certain times i don't use that but it is pretty cool to have that option five gigahertz it's the exact same stuff you want to enable your radio you want to make sure wi-fi multimedia is good and on you want to switch to short preamble again if you run into any issues a wi-fi device no longer connects try long preamble but you really don't want to use automatic so um through my experience i've never had a device not connect you shouldn't run into any issues unless the device is really old and I just haven't had that problem. All right, so the next thing down for me is in, uh, implicit beam forming. Most routers have some uh, type of beam forming these days, and beam forming is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. The router will form a beam directed toward wherever your device is and give you the best Wi-Fi performance. If your router has it, make sure it's enabled. Enable multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. You want to have that enabled. It's exactly what it sounds like. Multiple users can have a better experience with multi-in, multi-out. Pretty self-explanatory. This enable HT160. And that goes back to our original basic settings where you can use DFS channels. DFS channels use uh, channels that are, again, within radar signal. If there's any radar near you whatsoever, it will knock you offline. There's a whole bunch of just weirdness with it. I would not use it. So 
Those are your best overall settings for Wi-Fi. Not only your placement, again, middle of your place, if you can, out in the open, away from other electronics. Use those channels that I suggested for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless and go through these advanced wireless settings and at the very least, switch over to short preamble. If this video was helpful, please uh, give it a like. If you need any help, comment down below or hit me up on Discord. I'm quite active. Until the next time, as always, take it easy.